good evening and welcome to Wednesday night service. We're going to sing Blessed Assurance for our opening song. If you'd all take your songbooks and turn to number 22. everyone here, uh, whether you're here physically or by the internet, we're glad you could join us for this Wednesday evening service. Of course, with the coronavirus and all of the different warnings, there are different uh, things going on, but we're glad you could join us any way that you do join us. Let's begin the service with a word of prayer this evening. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that we can be in your house. Thank you for those that are assembled. Uh, across the internet and with us. And Lord, I pray you would bless the Bible study tonight. Work in each one of our hearts and lives. I pray you'd be with those that are sick and uh, with those not feeling well, that you would raise them up quickly. And Lord, I pray that this virus would be over, uh, that your hand would be evident. And Lord, I pray you would bring us all back together again in the spirit of love in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, Brother Jerry's going to come and read our missionary letter. I'm going to read the missionary letter from the Glennons. That's our admission to Alberta, Canada. Dear praying friends, Psalm 7118, Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. This psalm is a blessing to my heart, as yes, I am gray-headed, and yet, like the psalmist said, able to bring forth fruit in old age. It has always been a delight to my soul to be able to go house to house and door to door. In fact, the verse that the Lord used to call me to Canada was Acts 2020. In September 1979, the Lord put Canada upon my heart, and I and my family went forth from door to door in Michigan to house to house in Fort McCurry, Alberta, Canada. As you may already know, my dear wife broke her foot in 2016, which was a long time in healing. She carried on with her home and church duties by getting around on a knee scooter for 18 months. Her knee from her broken foot was on the seat and her good foot pushed on the ground to help her get around inside and outside the house. She healed up as well as it could be and was given the okay to walk on it. However, very carefully as she has no feeling in her feet due to diabetes. As for myself, I have been hobbling along for the last three years as my hip has been getting worse and worse. My right hip is now bone to bone. The good news is, by the time you receive this letter, I should be on my way to Edmonton, five hours south of us, for hip replacement surgery. The better news is, we are still seeing people saved. The Lord brings them to our door at the church house. Recently, we were able to lead a lost Catholic lady to Christ, who we have been praying for for a while now. Just before her, a 34-year-old lady was saved, also a Catholic. Now their names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise the Lord. The church is still going through a spiritual and financial struggle. People come and people go, much like what is happening all over. One of our faithful teachers, who was with us for several years, came to Gail and I two weeks ago and said she is moving to the States and left last week. Two positions need to be filled, Sunday school teacher and mission correspondence secretary, but such is a life in the ministry. 
Thank you for your prayers for us and the ministry here. Love from the fort, Dennis and Gail Glennon. And we appreciate the Glennon's ministry. Just a couple of quick announcements this evening. Uh, we want to make sure that people understand we are following what the governor's asked us to do, and he said he's going to reevaluate that April 7th. If they lift that, we will have our Easter services just like usual. So come out and join us for that. Uh, due to virus safety, we ask people that do attend the service if they don't mind us taking their temperature, their sanitizer all over the church until everything's lifted. We won't be shaking hands, uh, but we'll still be doing fellowship. Uh, we will continue to do the RU ministry on Friday nights. The normal attendance is a little less than 10, and so we want to continue to uh, reach out to those that need help with addiction. Other than that, the rest of our ministries are going to be suspended until the uh, governor lifts the, uh, the uh, uh, requirements he has there for emergency. And, and we want to be safe. We want everybody to be safe. And we're glad that you're joining us uh, this evening via the Internet. So I'm going to ask Brother Jerry to come lead us in another song. All right, we're going to read, uh, sing God Will Take Care of You, number 419. If you have your psalm books there where you are, otherwise it will be on the board behind me. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care. do we mention the the giving we are a independent fundamental baptist church which simply means we're independent of any denomination or association fundamental simply means that we go back uh, and align our beliefs with what the word of god teaches so we depend on god's people being faithful to god's program and giving and i want to say a a big thank you to those that gave by internet those that mailed it in those that dropped it by the church we appreciate that not only supports our missionaries but our ongoing projects here at the church and can uh, continue to support the ministry let's take our bibles tonight luke chapter 19 we've been teaching through the book of luke now for many many months and we're on luke 19 this is a triumphant entry of jesus christ and that's mentioned in the other Gospels. We want to take a few moments and consider five thoughts tonight as we look at this and make application to us. Luke 19.32 says, And they were sent, went their way, and found even as he had sent them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately 
cry out. And as we think of the uh, triumphal entry of Christ, of course, that's the week uh, that began with the triumphant entry, ended with the crucifixion and the resurrection. Many people have traditions from the uh, a Passion Week. I, I want to say this, let's not so much focus on tradition as we focus on the Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the average American knows very little about uh, uh, monarchs and how a king is coronated. You can go back in history and uh, there were some tremendous coronations. Of course, Queen Elizabeth was coronated, but nothing like uh, kings that used to be coronated. It was just a, a huge uh, uh, festival. It was huge. Uh, people were there. Power was being transferred. But I want us to see in this account tonight, there was little resemblance to that. Jesus came in riding on a donkey. He came in uh, meek and lowly, and we'll talk about that. But first of all, I want you to see a day of consideration. Look at verse 35. And they brought him to Jesus and cast their garments upon the cold and set Jesus thereon. And as they went their way, they spread their clothes in the way, and that's the triumphal entry, but Zechariah 9.9, 9, speaking of this, said, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion, shout, O daughters of Jerusalem, for behold, thy king cometh to thee, he is just, and having salvation lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon the colt of the foal of an ass. And boy, in those days, uh, royalty did ride on donkeys. Now, I want you to think about this. Most of the uh, conquerors would come in riding on a horse. In fact, if you look at Revelation, it portrays the Antichrist as coming on a white horse with a crown and a bow. Uh, recently in the news, uh, I was reading an article in Patterson, New Jersey. They just changed the uh, sound rules in there. And now there's a mosque that starts their prayers at 6 o'clock in the morning. In America, several cities in Michigan and New Jersey now have waived their sound laws and they have uh, Muslim prayers being rung out over the city at 6 o'clock in the morning. I think that's a shame in America. In fact, the Muslims do that proclaiming victory uh, that they've conquered a land. That's what their, their prayers are all about. I wish we would get back to 2 Chronicles 7.14 if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Maybe if Christians prayed a little more, we wouldn't have what's going on in our country today. Uh, for each one of us, though, realize Daniel 9.25 said there would be 69 weeks, each week representing seven days or seven years, Artaxerxes uh, commanded that the temple was built in Jerusalem and exactly 483 years later we have Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Boy, we have two prophecies fulfilled. The coincidence of that are almost mathematically impossible. Uh, but you think of what Jesus Christ did and all the prophecies he fulfilled and yet they were looking at him more as a uh, conqueror coming in to relieve them from Roman oppression, to, to give them uh, physical relief, but he was there for one reason, spiritual. You know, when I thought about that and the day of consideration, they were considering, hey, we're going to get out of this bondage to the Romans. Boy, a lot of people today are... You know, they look to Jesus, hey, is this uh, a consideration? Is this uh, uh, going to heal us from these uh, uh, flu viruses? You know that uh, uh, flu viruses and, and different things, they come and go. But I want to say this, uh, the eternal life that you have is going to spend uh, eternity somewhere. Every single one of us need to consider that. We need to make sure that we understand 2 Corinthians 6, 2 that says now is the day of salvation. Today is the accepted time. Number two, we see a day of calculation. Uh, as the people were there uh, and we see Jesus triumphantly entering Jerusalem, uh, you think about that. Uh, during that time, they did a census 10 years later and 
Uh, over 260 sacrifices were done at the Passover, and one sacrifice could be for two people uh, or for 10 people. So there literally could have been close to 2 million people in Jerusalem at that time. Boy, you think about the, the calculation, Jesus realizing, hey, I'm fulfilling scripture, but lying ahead of me is the cross. Do you know for us on a daily basis, Jesus says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Boy, if we look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down on the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. You know, when we look at the consideration, we look at the calculation, Jesus knew what was coming. It was crucifixion. It was a beating. It was a crown of thorns. But calculating all of that, he was looking at the souls of men. He was looking at you and I tonight. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus was willing to die for us even when we didn't deserve it? Boy, you talk about calculations. I think of the story a pastor shared many years ago about a, a missionary and his wife that went to South America to be missionaries. And while they were there, there were uh, snakes and bugs. And, and the missionary's wife said, I didn't bargain for this. Uh, it's too dangerous for our children. We need to get out of here. And after a couple of uh, weeks of that, the missionary sadly uh, left the mission field, went back home, took a job in his home church. And and uh, boy, he was just heartbroken and disappointed. His wife said, hey, I wasn't uh, a bargaining for this. And, and then he got a phone call and his wife said, "Hun, get home as quick as you can. Our, our son went underneath the house chasing a ball and uh, got bit by a rattlesnake. And boy, he rushed home as quickly as he could and <clears throat> went to pick up that little boy and rush him to the hospital. And in his rushed to get there. He didn't notice the other son, and he backed his car over that son. The pastor said it was the saddest funerals that he ever did. Two small caskets in front of that church, and that mother uh, laid over <clears throat> those caskets, saying, I can serve you now. Boy, she didn't calculate that they were just as safe in the center of God's will in South America where the snakes and bugs were as they were in America. And I wonder often as we have this uh, uh, epidemic on us and people are fearful and they're wondering what's going to happen next, listen to me tonight. I've got good news for you. When you are trusting Jesus Christ, that's the only calculation you need to make. I understand there's some economic hard times in front of us. I understand there's some sickness. I understand, and we're not taking that for granted. We want to be safe during that time. But the greatest place of safety you're going to find is calculating that you'll find that safety in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope is in Him. Hebrews 12 tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Number three, we see a day of confirmation. Verse 37, And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Boy, isn't that exciting? And that's exciting for us even today as Jesus entered, that was a day of consideration, a day of calculation, but it's a day of confirmation. Uh, the song says, Jesus, the sweetest name I know. You know, during this time that we're closed in, during this time where we may not be working, during this time there's not a lot of social interaction, could I challenge you to do one thing? Boy, if you will study the names of Jesus, it'll confirm to your heart that He's all we need. 
Let me give you just a very short list. Obviously, there's many more, but if you study these out, what an encouragement they'll be. What a confirmation. Hey, one day we're going to stand before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, He's the Almighty. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the Bread of Life, the Bright Morning Star, the Counselor, the Cornerstone, the Captain of our Salvation, the Door, the Deliverer, the Everlasting Father, the Eternal, the Faithful and True, the Friend, the Good Shepherd, the Horn of our Salvation, Emmanuel, Intercessor, Jesus, a Joy of our Soul, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Lamb of Glory, Mediator, Messiah, Nazarene, our peace, our propitiation, the great physician, the quiet in the storm, the redeemer, the resurrection, the savior, the sovereign, the son of God, the true vine, the unspeakable gift, the victorious conqueror, the wonderful word of life, the way and the zeal. Just a very brief thumbnail sketch of who we serve tonight. I am worried about people, I am praying for people, but my confirmation comes in Jesus Christ, not in the government. I'm not depending on the government to solve our problems. I'm depending on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which brings us to point number four, a day of conclusion. You know, we all have different perceptions. People have different perceptions of who Jesus is, but in verse 38 it says, Blessed... Be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Where did we hear that before? We heard that all the way back in Luke chapter 2 when the angels said, Peace on earth and good tidings to men. Glory to God in the highest. You know, many today are confused regarding who the Lord is and their conclusion of who He is. Uh, Recently I read about Uh, Cayenne West because they're Kanye West. I'm sorry, I don't keep up with all the 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 music people. Kanye West and and uh, boy, he's had this conversion and and he's speaking out for God. So I decided to uh, uh, check out the facts of that and read his personal testimony. His testimony was, I was millions of dollars in debt and God delivered me from debt. So I think. God is this, Jesus is the Savior of the world. I'm sorry tonight, but that's the wrong conclusion. Jesus isn't the Savior of the world because He delivers you financially or delivers you health-wise. Many of the people in Israel made the same mistake when Jesus came in triumphantly here. They were thinking, hey, He's going to get rid of the Roman government. The Jews are going to uh, have their kingdom again. And Jesus said, listen, my kingdom's not of this world, or my my disciples would rise up. He said, my kingdom's out of this world. And boy, we need to come to the conclusion that many people missed here, Jesus is the Messiah. Whether your bills are paid or whether they're not paid, whether your health is on top or whether it's not on top, Jesus is still the Savior of the world. He's the conclusion. He's the one we ought to be trusting. Uh, the Pharisees, they had contempt. If you look at verse 39, and some of the Pharisees from the multitude said, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Now think about this with me for just a moment. Weren't these the same Pharisees that saw Jesus heal people? These were the same Pharisees that saw Jesus raise people from the dead. Saw many of His miracles were actually there when He fed the 5,000. And boy, the the, the crowds were crying praise to Jesus and the religious crowd said, hey, Jesus rebuked them. They're not doing it the way we ought, think they ought to. Isn't that the same way the religious crowd is today? Hey, if you don't do it our way, you're wrong. No, look at me this evening. If you don't do it the Bible way, you're wrong. It's not what some religion teaches, not what men's traditions are. It's not what we perceive it. It is what the Word of God says it is. And boy, we could come to the conclusion that our peace comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, not from circumstances, not from things being great, not from things being bad. In fact, we see a day of coronation in verse 40. And Jesus answered them, He said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, 
the stones would immediately cry out. I want to read just one other passage to you. Psalm 19 says this, The heavens declare His glory, the glory of God. The firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day utter speech. Night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Jesus came in riding on a colt, a beast of burden, showing that He's not only the King, He'll carry our burdens for you. You know, if we're stressing tonight, if we're carrying a heavy burden, I've got good news. Jesus will carry that burden for you. But I don't want you to mistake this. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want to share just one last passage this evening. Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And by the way, during this time would be a good time for us to allow that mind to be in us. What kind of mind was it? Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, even unto the death of the cross. Wherefore... God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me just remind you tonight, without Jesus Christ, we do have no king. But with Jesus Christ, we have the King of kings and Lord of lords. You know, uh, uh, it's a shame that uh, I read an article this week, some congressmen, people were saying, hey, let's pray, let's pray. Some congressmen uh, used some profanity and said, we don't need prayer. I say to those congressmen, one day you will bow your knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To professors and colleges all over America trying to teach young people there is no God. One day you will bow your knee and worship Him as King of kings and Lord of lords. Every single person in Christian, can I encourage you tonight? Can I encourage you during this time? Take time every day to bow your knee and worship Him as King of kings and Lord of lords. He's in control. He knows what's going on. He knows your needs today. He knows my needs. He knows what we're struggling with. Boy, He's with us on the mountaintop. He's with us through the valley. Let's make sure that when we consider those five thoughts about the entry of the King, that our hearts open and the King of kings sits on the throne of our lives. Lord, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the Word of God. Luke chapter 19, what an encouragement. Boy, what a, a day that will be when we get to see you ride in as King of kings and Lord of lords. I can't imagine that day those were there and people came to their own conclusions and today help each one of us to come to the conclusion of the Bible that you are the Lord of glory, in Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother James, our assistant pastor, to come and go over our prayer requests and close us out in a word of prayer. Just a few of the new and special prayer requests for this week. I want to be praying for Miss Leslie Millick with the stomach bug. We're praying for Baby Pepper with the stomach issues and the Sanzisfer's syndrome. Uh, Brother George is still recovering from pneumonia. We want to keep him in prayer. And then, of course, we want to remember our president and all of our other government leaders at this time that just the Lord would give them wisdom and just help them under the pressures and the many decisions they have to make. And, of course, we want to be praying for uh, our state, our city, and our family and friends just that we have protection from the virus and just that we would trust the Lord at this time. Our missionary spotlight this week is the Glennons in Alberta, Canada. We'll keep them in prayer. And then our ministry of the month is the grounds and maintenance volunteers. And, you know, we get a lot of work done around here because of all the people that help and volunteer, and we want to keep them in prayer. Let's go to the Lord at prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your protection, Lord, the blessings, the answers to prayer we've seen. Lord, we come before you with a couple requests. Lord, we want to pray for Miss Leslie and the stomach bug that she's been dealing with. Lord, just help her to recover from that. We pray that she, her, she would have no other issues with that and that would go away com completely. Lord, please be with baby Pepper at this time. Also with the stomach issues and the syndrome, Lord, just be with her. 
uh, be with their family, Lord, and just give them wisdom and make decisions, Lord, and we pray that that would be something that would be cleared up. Lord, please be with Brother George. Lord, keep him safe at this time. Lord, and his family, we just pray that you would help him to fully recover from that and be healthy and able to be with us again soon, Lord. Be with our nation and the leaders at this time, Lord. We think of President Trump, uh, the Vice President, Lord. Just give them wisdom, uh, the many decisions, the pressures, Lord, uh, at this time. I just pray that you would help them to come close to you through this. Lord, be with our governor, uh, be with the mayor and all of the officials, Lord, the healthcare people that are working tirelessly at this time. I just pray that you would protect them. Lord, bring our nation closer to you through this crisis. Lord, thank you for the missionaries we get to support. Uh, we pray for the Glennons specifically this week. Lord, just bless them and their ministry there. Lord, thank you for our volunteers. Lord, and the many men and women who work hard to clean the building and help us with repairs and upkeep. Lord, just thank them for the good work. Lord, I pray that they would get some time to recover and rest maybe now. I just pray that you would be with all those that are watching online this evening. I just pray that you would bless their families. Lord, bless them. Lord, help us to come closer to you through all of this. In your name we pray, amen. All right, just one last announcement, and we'll be finished tonight. And if you do have prayer requests, please send them in. Uh, you can send them in by uh, email. You can call them in. Uh, our phone numbers are on the website. We'll be glad to pray with you at any time. But please do send prayer requests in so we can get those in the prayer bulletin for each Wednesday night. God bless you. We love you. Uh, take care.